Um, again, warm welcome to everyone. Uh, good morning to everyone who is based in Belgium. Um, good afternoon to uh, all of you who are um, calling in from India. Um, First of all, my name is uh, Wouter van Hees. I am the Trade and Investment Commissioner for Flanders Investment and Trade, uh, based here in Mumbai. Um, and um, from Flanders Investment and Trade, you've taken the um, initiative to organize a new webinar on uh, fintech opportunities in India. Um, at Flanders Investment and Trade for India, we're focusing um, on all things tech, um, digital tech, of course, being a very important um, ecosystem or sphere um, in that uh, in, in the broad tech field, and of course, fintech is um, is an important part of that. Uh, we've been working on fintech for a couple of years already. Um, it started uh, in April 2020 with the publication of a market report on the fintech sector in India. Uh, one year later, so last year, 2021, um, we organized the first webinar on fintech opportunities, and we thought it was interesting, given the fast pace of development in the sector. To follow it up this year um, with today's webinar and at the same time we're also preparing an update to uh, 2020's market report which will be published uh, sometime in the next few weeks um, then early november we have um, actually a big flagship event um, in the, the form of the singapore fintech festival where um, our colleagues uh, from fit singapore will be organizing um, flemish participation um, and one of our uh, colleagues from the Mumbai office, uh, Sherlin, who is very involved in the fintech uh, sector at our office, um, will be traveling to Singapore for the fintech festival to uh, coordinate and organize uh, B2B matchmakings between the Flemish and the Indian uh, FICO, fintech in ecosystems that will be present um, at this festival. And also we're thinking already uh, ahead into the future um, because also next year in 2023, we will uh, most likely develop a new webinar, um, which all likely will be focused on uh, cybersecurity in the FinTech field. So a bit more particular, um, but it's also of course, uh, quite an important aspect of uh, financial technology. Why do we focus uh, so much on FinTech? Um, first, look at the big picture. Uh, India is currently the fifth largest economy in the world. Year-on-year -year growth in the first quarter of this year was 13.5%, which is one of the highest growth rates, um, actually the highest among developing countries. Um, the country is projected to grow 7% this fiscal year, and according to IMF projections, India will be the fastest growing economy in the world, not just this year, but in the next three years. The country is, of course, very focused on all sorts of cutting-edge digital technologies, mm -hmm to help bridge gaps, find solutions for several issues, and for example, infrastructure and also in finance. So things like 5G, AI, blockchain, uh, machine learning, deep learning, these aren't just buzzwords in India, these are real solutions being developed for real issues. And of course, FinTech uh, is also a major part of this game as uh, you will all learn today. It's one of the world's top FinTech markets with digital payment volumes um, threefold that of China and almost seven times higher than the combined real-time payment volume of the US, Canada, UK, France and Germany. Over 31% of all payments in India last year were done through real-time payment instruments. And India's unified payment system, UPI, is the world's best performing real-time payment ecosystem and is gradually expanding to Europe also in the near future. And we'll hear all about that uh, later on today. I don't want to spill all the beans just yet. I'm not a specialist, um, but we do have a fantastic panel of uh, real specialists on board for today's webinar. And I'll very quickly introduce them. Professor uh, Bjorn Kums, uh, he will be our first speaker of today. Um, he is professor in the fields of Finnovation and Fintech at the Vlerik Business School in Belgium, and he's also board member at Fintech Belgium. He will give an overview of the current state of play of India's Fintech sector. After Professor Kums has uh, set the scene, uh, we will have two speakers who will showcase quite concrete opportunities for international and thus also F Flemish fintech companies in and also through India, because India is more than a huge market in and by itself. It's also a global hub for fintech innovation, creating market opportunities that expand far beyond the country's borders. So Mr. Shantanu Talukdar is head of innovation for financial services in Europe at uh, Tata Consultancy Services, TCS. Uh, Shantanu is calling in from Amsterdam, where he is based, and he will introduce TCS's Co-Innovation Network, which is a program that TCS has developed to connect startups, academia, industry, and various digital tech fields, including fintech. And after Shantanu, the floor will be given to uh, Mr. Murli 
Kumar Nandini, who is the Senior Innovation Manager at ABNBEF based out of Bangalore here in India. He will introduce Beer Garage, a digital innovation platform developed by the world's leading beer brewing company. And he will also share how this can be an opportunity for international fintech companies. Before we actually kick off, before I give the floor to uh, Professor Kumps, um, some final household rules. Um, probably already noticed, but everyone will be uh, muted for the entirety of uh, the webinar, except for the very last part, which is a Q&A session. Um, so that will happen after the three presentations. Uh, in the meantime, the chat will be open, so throughout the whole webinar. Um, so feel free to drop any questions you might already have uh, in the chat, and we can tackle them then later in the Q&A session. The whole session is also being recorded um, and presentations and also speakers details will be shared afterwards with everyone who joined in. Um, and then afterwards, going uh, moving forward, of course, if you have further questions on fintech opportunities in India or on the Indian market in, uh, in general, um, both we here in Mumbai, but also our colleagues who are based in New Delhi and in Bangalore, uh, where we have the two other fit offices for India, we are always ready to support uh, your business. Thank you. And now I give the floor to uh, Professor Bjorn Kums for his presentation. Hey, Walter. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for the kind introduction. I know that most people are probably here to listen to the beer presentation from Raleigh, uh, but uh, bear with me a little bit uh, to have a short view on uh, what's happening on fintech. Uh, um, let me share my presentation. Normally this should be OK. Um, so, indeed, uh, I'm a professor and partner at Zurich Business School. I mainly teach on financial service innovation and fintech, platform and ecosystem management, uh, digital transformation, and a side hobby of me, gaming and esports, also becoming a very interesting sector uh, to focus on. And I'm also part of the board of Fintech Belgium, as uh, Wouter already uh, said. But enough about me. Uh, the reason I'm here, uh, probably, I think, is uh, because in August I posted this picture uh, on uh, LinkedIn and it, uh, I got quite some reaction uh, to that one. Um, this is uh, the class of IMT Gaziabad. Uh, it's in, uh, I think, about one hour, one hour and 20 minutes from, uh, from New, New Delhi, a school with which we have a partnership and where I teach a course on uh, fintech uh, financial service innovation to a, a group of uh, young, bright minds in India. And um, uh, I have to say that many of the things that I will talk about here today, you know, also reflect and, and link back to uh, the classes that I give there, uh, because I will I will give a short overview of why India is so interesting when it comes to fintech. And I'll go over four main things, and that's the talent. And you see some of the future talent here, but there's a lot of talent uh, already there uh, working heavily on, on fintech solutions. Capital, uh, uh, the funding that is available, uh, whether there is a market and whether there's demand uh, for these solutions and how that works in, in, uh, in India. And then, of course, uh, the, the policy. The combination of these four is typically what, uh, uh, what we look at um, when we're looking for an interesting ecosystem. And, and you can bet that uh, uh, India is a, an interesting fintech ecosystem. What's going on? Well, I have 15 minutes, so so I cannot cover it all. Um, let me basically say I just had a, a few, um, you know, headlines of the last, let's say, one two year here. Uh, I could have, you know, filled the page with with a number of interesting things. But just to highlight, you know, uh, this is from yesterday. Wordline uh, will empower mobile payments. Uh, it's uh, the, the uh, UPI based payments that Walter already talked about. It's the most, uh, uh, you know, uh, performing real time payment ecosystem uh, worldwide uh, that they've built in India. Um, it's uh, that alone is a reason to look into uh, what is happening in India. I'll come back to that when I, I shortly introduce India stack. Um, but um, if a, a big player like, for example, Worldline is is uh, empowering mobile payments um, and and, uh, and enabling the fact that Indians will be able to pay and use their UPI uh, payment system also here in Europe, that already says something. Huh? Um, you know, the, the topics that you will find there are the ones that, that we also talk about. Huh? Um, so recently, this is from October 10th, India prepares a digital rupee pilot. Just like here in Europe, where we're thinking about central bank digital currencies, uh, the digital euro. Um, that same discussion is going on in India about, you know, how will we do it? Will we do it? Will there be a, a central bank digital currency that we emit? Yes or no? 
um, but you will find this exact same trends that we talk about here. Um, payments is already quite advanced, quite mature, um, but for, there are many and many initiatives when it comes to wealth tech, when it comes to uh, uh, insure tech, um, when it comes to uh, crypto and, and, and decentralized finance, you know, you will find uh, the exact same discussions going on in India. As I said, uh, uh, I think it has already been said in the introduction also, um, India is an interesting market as a whole. Uh, um, there's a, a, you know, a real uh, growth story being written over there, and the exact same thing also uh, transposes, of course, to fintech. Uh, um, India is one of the top four most attractive fintech, fintech destinations. Uh, when you look at um, I still consider the UK to be the fintech capital of the world, uh, um, still, uh, um, even after after Brexit. Um, if you look at volumes, of course, you cannot ignore the US. Um, and, and China, uh, yeah, the, some of the tech giants and what they're doing in, in, in fintech is, is, you know, of course, very interesting and are very interesting cases. But, you know, right up there with these three uh, giants, you have India. Um, if you look at, at, at the graph uh, at the bottom here, uh, it shows progress of fintech adoption. Uh, fintech adoption, that means, you know, is there a demand uh, in the country? Are solutions actually being adopted? There you can see that India is at the same level, number one position together with uh, with China. Um, and just to, to put it in perspective, we can be proud uh, of what we do in Belgium, of course, and we have a nice uh, fintech landscape, uh, but, you know, um, we are at number 42 at the uh, uh, left part of the graph there. So um, just to put it in perspective on how interesting it is to actually have a look of uh, what is happening in India when it comes to fintech. And what I'll do today uh, in the in the short time frame is go over four main blocks uh, of what makes an ecosystem interesting and apply that to uh, to India and fintech. That's talent, capital, policy and demand. Um, the first one, I think, um, is, you know, when I talk to fintech entrepreneurs, uh, especially in, in Belgium, Europe, um, it's, it's always the same story. We have a lot of good ideas. Uh, and then the first problem is they say, Bjorn, you know, uh, the main problem I have is I cannot find a techie. You know, I, I, have, I have a great uh, um, business idea. I can write the business plan. Uh, we have a, a number of very bright students at Valeric Business School who know how to manage a company, set up a company, be great entrepreneurs. But if you want to be active in fintech, you have fin and tech, of course. So you need to be able to have the, uh, um, you know, the tech talent. And that is something uh, which is a completely different story when you go to India. Um, again, when I, when I refer back to my class, and I know that this is just one case, of course, but um, this was a group of uh, almost all engineers. I did not have to explain anything about digital. I did not have to explain anything about how, you know, the tech aspects because, um, you know, it's it's kind of almost native uh, over there. So um, some studies, some numbers, the digital tech talent in India is growing five times faster uh, than the average in the industry. Um, India is predicted to have nine to 10 million uh, strong tech workforce in the coming five years. Uh, and it, it is not only tech, huh? it is the combination. Um, it is uh, the combination of people who, who know business aspects, um, but have that, that, that tech basis and, and have that digital skill set, you know, um, and that's, that's a very strong combination. Uh, which means that if you want to, you know, uh, set up a business, if you want to be active in fintech, this is a great environment to be here uh, because you have pe so many people, um, you know, who talk about AI, who talk about machine learning, who know about uh, blockchain. Um, again, uh, there's, there's, um, that's a great advantage to have the, you know, uh, that level of talent uh, available to you. Um, and not only that, it's not only, uh, you know, it's not only me saying that, of course, huh? um, when we when we talk about talent, it's also, you know, what, you know, how does the environment look like? And uh, just have a look at, at, at uh, you know, some of these big tech companies who um, are increasingly active in India. Um, Google recently invested up to more than 1 billion in, uh, in an Indian uh, uh, telco company. Uh, and it's, that's not the first investment that they did. So it's, it's not that 
only that one billion. Uh, by the way, Google is one of the main uh, payments apps uh, next to PhonePay, which is now Walmart owned. Uh, but um, Walmart's uh, PhonePay, um, which is an Indian native company, of course, and Google Pay together uh, make up a majority of, of, of the market today. Um, Google you know, is very, very active in India. Amazon, if you look at the, f the last couple of years, very active in India. Uh, most of the M&As and most of the investments that they do and the stakes that they do um, are in Indian companies. Uh, this is a very important uh, market for them. Why? Because you have all of these elements that come together. You have um, the fact that uh, people are very tech savvy, that is a growing market, uh, that a lot of innovation is taking place at this moment. Um, and, and because, and I'll come back to that one, the infrastructure is great to build on. Um, same for Meta, for uh, for uh, um, you know former Facebook, other you know Apple is also uh, making a big big move you know into India. Um, so you know if you want if you are a fintech and you want to want to work together also with these companies, um, you know in Belgium uh, you can you can try to 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 team up with these companies but they're much more active for example in uh, uh, in India uh, because uh, this is a very very important market uh, for them to be active in um, so that's a little bit about the, the the talent environment you know when it comes to academia entrepreneurship technology firms that are active there I'll you know capital I'll be quick on that one um, there's plenty at this moment um, if you look at funding, uh, funding is on the rise. Uh, funding is on the rise for many startups, but uh, especially for fintech, it's the most heavily funded of all the uh, startup uh, categories. It is very similar to what we know in Europe. So, you know, the majority of the funds go to payments. Um, second is lending. Uh, that's, uh, that's that's quite uh, uh, similar from what we know. And then, and that's interesting to know, it's not always about payments. It's not only about payments because when we talk to about India, often you know the focus is on payments, and rightfully so. And there's some some great innovations that have taken place. Um, but today you see a rise in wealth tech solution, insure tech, neo banking, uh, blockchain, and crypto. Um, uh, we discussed uh, uh, in class also, you know, uh, sustainability aspects, uh, 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 financial inclusion, ESG focused uh, startups with fintech solutions. Um, again, all of the topics that that are very high on the agenda uh, here in Europe, you see coming back also in the uh, in the Indian market. Um, buy now, pay later has been a, a trend that. Uh, you, we've seen in the US, we've seen in, in uh, many uh, different countries, not so much in Belgium, I think, but kick in, uh, same as happened in India. So the, you, you find the same types of uh, uh, of topics and they find their funding. Uh, um, the last couple of uh, months to the last year, we've seen a drop, but that is uh, in line with what we've seen in the rest of the world. That is the, the, the general context, which has made funding a little bit uh, less accessible um, than, than uh, the last couple of years. It shows also in the, um, you know, in the results and the valuations of fintech companies. Um, there's one company with a valuation. I don't know whether it's still up to date of more than 10 billion. I assume that one is Paytm. Um, then you know, and this is 2020 versus 2022. That's two years. If you look that the country went from having seven seven unicorns uh, to 22. Uh, this is a BCG report. I had the previous version, and there they projected to go um, between now, between 2020 and 2025, from 7 to 15, something like that. And in only two years, they already went from 7 to 22. Same for, you know, um, all of the lower echelons there where they talk about, you know, a bit lower valuations, but you see growth happening there. Uh, so these companies are producing uh, value and are being evaluated uh, accordingly to that. Um, so that's a little bit when it comes to capital, uh, uh, funding being available, uh, valuations of companies. Um, third one is, I think, very important, and that's policy. I think that's something that um, um, getting on slippery ice here, maybe, but that we can only dream of is the the um, the level of of awareness, but also the level of vision that. Uh, policymakers, regulators, et cetera, show when it comes to building a strong infrastructure foundation. And there you cannot 
um, if you talk about fintech in India, you have to touch on India stack, of, uh, of course. And what is India stack is it is basically different layers that over the years have built been built to make uh, digitalization much more accessible to anyone. And there's four layers, quickly go over them. The first one is what they call presence layer, that, that is identification and authentication. So um, they have a system of, of biometric identity. Um, secondly is turning everything, you know, from paper to digital. Um, paperless systems, paperless documents, uh, um, um, which helps, of course, if you want to build an entire digital digital economy. The third one is probably the most well known and, and the most important one that, that that is, you know, everything that has to do with payments, uh, cashless layer on top of that. So um, UPI is, is a good example for mobile payments, which has, as Walter already explained in the beginning, skyrocketed. Um, the adoption of UPI is really impressive. It is also um, being internationalized. So. Uh, uh, after the growth in, in, in India itself, it is now being deployed uh, internationally. Um, and the final one is also a very important one, especially for new entrepreneurs um, or people who, or companies who want to be active in India, that is a consent layer. Um, so everything that has to do with data sharing and giving consent, who can have access to your data? We know that in Europe a little bit in, uh, you know, from PSD2, everything that has to do with uh, giving consent about uh, giving access to payments data, account aggregation, things like that. Um, some of these elements, it's not exactly the same, but some of these elements you see coming back in that consent layer that they're building now. But the thing is, is that uh, it's not being limited uh, to only financial services. Um, um, I show that on the next slide uh, is that, um, um, you know, they're also looking at can we uh, can we do something similar that people can give consent about getting access to health data and to you know uh, all other types of uh, uh, data that could be made available uh, to to facilitate and to take away friction in the entire system. And let's be honest, that's impressive huh? because if you have um, you know a way to digitally uh, identify yourself, authenticate yourself. All the paper flows are taken away, are being digitized. Payments are, you know, you take away friction out of payments. You make it easily accessible to do mobile payments. Um, and, uh, you know, you then make it easy to, you know, work with, let's say, open data, building all that, uh, you know, being able to build on, on top of that as, as an entrepreneur, as a, as a fintech company, yeah, that that is that is uh, really a delight, I think, to 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 have that, and that means that in the future we now see lending solutions, insur insurance solutions, um, wealth tech, etc., that can just build on top of the basic infrastructure, which is fully digitalized, um, coming with a, a lot of you know real time. Um, you know, straight through processing solutions uh, in the sector. And that's one of the big strengths, I think. Uh, finally, um, of course, demand. Uh, you know, is there a demand? Is there a, a market to serve? Huh? Because sometimes we, we see that in Europe, um, you know, there's a lot of innovation, there's a lot of supply, there's a lot of uh, um, um, solutions being built, but adoption is not always there. Well, also there you could see if you look at the Indian market um, that there is a very, very strong market demand for all of these Indian solutions. Um, Indians are increasingly going online um, and are also adopting uh, all of these digital financial solutions. Um, if you look at digital payments, you see strong growth rates, um, but it is also starting to happen uh, in insurance, in lending, in mutual funds, etc. And and the potential to to uh, you know the growth is already impressive, but the potential is 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 even much more vast if you if you if you ask me because there is a, an entire um, group of people who are still underbanked who do you know are not uh, included in the traditional financial system who need um, uh, to be insured who need funding you know who need uh, um, um, you know uh, credits. Um, who uh, will become um, much more, um, you know, uh, wealthy and will have to basically also, um, you know, find a way to to deal with that wealth. Um, so wealth tech, um, intra tech, uh, lending, etc. Um, the coming five to ten years, we will see a massive growth in all of these different domains.
And then I want to wrap up with with this one. Uh, what is the opportunity that 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 is there in the future? Is that um, we've already come a long way in India when it comes to payments and when it comes to the financial services infrastructure. And as I explained with the digital India stack, with with the basic financial, uh, uh, the basic digital infrastructure. What you see happening is an interest also outside of the financial services sec sector. So the non-financial service players uh, um, who see fintech as a, an important part or building block in their business model. Um, because it is so easy accessible, because it is fully digital. Um, and that means if you're active as an entrepreneur in India, uh, you will you know, find a, a lot of demand, not also retail, but also from companies um, that see fintech as, as a very interesting combination to build their own business model. The, the entire idea of embedded and embedded banking, embedded fintech into whatever solution that you want to build, huh? whether it's in, in agriculture and agri-tech, whether it's uh, in the retail sphere, whether it's in real estate and property management, whether it's in healthcare, we know um, from, uh, you know, also from, from in Europe uh, that, that um, fintech is kind of like a core service. Uh, there's always uh, a payment involved or there's always an insurance part or there's always, you know, credit which needs to be uh, um, uh, lended out to someone. So, um, and that's what you see here on the slide is that the growth opportunity is huge um, because fintech is being, uh, you know, considered already today as a basic building block which can just be plugged in into all of these new uh, uh, business models. And that's probably uh, the most interesting thing of what we're going to see the next couple of years. Um, so I have a quick look at my time. I see I already surpassed it a little bit. Um, but, you know, in a nutshell, uh, I know it's very quick, uh, but don't hesitate to ask questions uh, or, uh, you know, talk to me afterwards about this. Um, but um, certainly a lot of uh, opportunities and a very, very interesting market when it comes to fintech. And we'll see a lot of uh, more interesting things to come. Thank you for listening. From my side, I'll pass it on to Chantal Uno uh, from here on. Thanks a lot, uh, Professor Gums. Um, I will also just uh, start my presentation. Um, so good morning, uh, good afternoon. I'm Shantanu. I'm uh, leading the innovation for our financial services uh, in Europe and uh, based in Netherlands. And after a wonderful uh, setting the tone about the Indian ecosystem, I would like to uh, share perspectives about uh, the TCS and especially the TCS Co-Innovation Network, which is a network of fintechs, startups, academic alliances globally. A quick background about uh, TCS. Uh, TCS stands for Tata Consultancy Services. It's the part of the Tata Group. Uh, we are headquartered in India, uh, but pretty much operating across the globe. Um, so we have operations across 50 countries uh, and employee strength of around 600,000 people. And uh, the main purpose uh, why we exist is basically we are supporting organizations with their uh, digital business and IT transformation journey. So we would like to be part of those journeys where uh, our clients are organizing and transforming themselves. Uh, we have uh, 2000 clients out of which 400 uh, in the financial services and uh, within financial services across the spectrum, right from retail, wholesale banking, uh, institutional, also to the stock exchange, capital markets, CSDs, uh, insurance, and so on. In the last uh, about 40 years, TCS has been investing significantly in uh, research and innovation. So when we talk about research, uh, these are the computational research areas, which is at the intersection of life science, behavioral, mathematical, and physical science. So in the research, uh, we invest money, and the output of it is the ideas. And the ideas goes into the innovation part, where we are making uh, impact uh, to the society, to the business. So basically innovation is where the idea comes in and the money goes out. And to augment this whole innovation, uh, we have the extended ecosystem, which is the co-innovation network. So we believe while we have our own significant investment in this, but that is not sufficient, and we have to tap into the global talent pool and the global ecosystem that we have been uh, developing over the last uh, few years. So I'm going to deep dive into the coin, which is of the interest uh, today. 
So the coin, uh, the co-innovation network, uh, the main principle here is that we keep customer at us at the center and to solve the customer problems, we have developed uh, this ecosystem around it. Over the last 16, 17 years, we have been actively developing ecosystems across three main geographic clusters. First is the, uh, the Americas, the North, South America and the Canada. The second cluster is UK, Europe and uh, Israel. And the third cluster is India, Asia Pacific and Middle East uh, and Africa. And uh, uh, over the last several years, we have uh, invested uh, our teams in uh, curating this ecosystem. Just to uh, indicate, um, so we have like active 2400 startups, uh, including fintechs in our ecosystem. Uh, as a company, we do not take any uh, direct equity stake in these fintechs. But what we believe and what we do is that we uh, believe in building active relationships and partnerships with these fintechs uh, through which we can we can go along uh, very far to help our clients. Uh, these are some of the themes. Uh, these are just again indicative themes. Uh, it is an evolving list. And uh, while some of the themes are quite focused on fintech, uh, for example, in alternative lending or the buy now pay later areas, but then there are a lot of focus on uh, tech fin. So basically the technologies which are helping the financial institutions, uh, be it on the, on the sustainability side, on the data side, platforms, and so on. Now, we have been actively participating and partnering with uh, several fintechs across the globe. And uh, this is the overall life cycle of it. So we start with the discovery. So where we uh, have direct connects, we establish connects with the fintech ecosystem. The second part is evaluation, where we identify what are the complementarity that we can establish. So we also have our own products and solutions, and we find out that, okay, how it can further be augmented by the fintechs and the insurtechs of the world. The third part is the curation. So here we do active workshops, hackathons, POC developments with the fintechs. The fourth is collaboration. Uh, so I think here uh, we also directly interact with uh, the fintechs to help them position uh, in the RFIs, RFPs. Uh, we also have the marketplaces. I will I will talk about it in a in a bit. Uh, and the output of that collaboration eventually goes into the potential collab uh, uh, the commercialization opportunities. Well, there are several channels of uh, engaging with fintechs um, that there could be you know direct channels that okay there is a very specific problem statement there are opportunities and we would like to position the fintech solution directly there so that is that is always there but broadly uh, these are the three uh, channels where we are helping fintechs uh, provide the platform uh, to them to uh, have a broader outreach to our ecosystem and of course, I mean, India is one of the prime ecosystem. I mean, TCS as a company is running the financial backbone of the Indian financial ecosystem. And uh, through these platforms, we basically are not just giving fintechs access to India, but globally. So TCS Cubo, uh, the first one, it's a cloud first platform for creating business ecosystem. So here, I mean, based on the uh, on the partnership uh, slide that you uh, just saw in the previously, so based on the maturity, we also uh, list uh, the fintech into these platforms, where the fintechs also gets an opportunity to uh, share their product catalog. They can uh, share their APIs so that our business units, our clients can also experiment uh, with their solutions. So TCS Cubo is quite generic and industry agnostic. The second one is TCS Coin Business Accelerator Program. So it's a quite a dedicated fixed time uh, accelerator program, and it is done for individual business units. So in a given, uh, for, for very specific uh, themes or areas, uh, some fintechs are chosen, and then they go through this entire accelerator program. And the third is the TCS Banks Marketplace. So TCS Banks is a, is a flagship product. Uh, which is used across several large financial institutions across the world. Many banks in India as well, they use the core banking product, uh, uh, which is developed by TCS banks. We also have other banks uh, product in the insurance, in the capital markets, and so on. 
So over the, over the last few years, we have realized that we have to expand that ecosystem further and we don't want to do everything by ourselves. And that's where we have opened up this marketplace where we partner with several uh, fintechs. Uh, so this is a bank's marketplace, very much specific to our bank's product portfolio. And if any of the fintechs also helps in, in uh, as, as a complementarity of, of our product, uh, we partner with them as well. Uh, this is uh, one example on our uh, incubation program, so which is called as TCS Digital Impact Square. Uh, it is in Nasik. It is like a six hours drive from Mumbai. And uh, the idea here is to uh, select few startups and go through this entire incubation program. Uh, it is not very specific to fintechs per se, but it is a generic uh, a startup focusing on uh, different dimensions of business as well as the societal aspects. And uh, the way we engage with clients, uh, there are different ways and there are different type of problem statements that we get from our clients. And uh, this is one example on uh, one of the large uh, financial services client in India. They wanted to embark into a, uh, uh, they wanted to get into more disruptive uh, business models. And the problem statement was that, okay, we want to find some disruptive innovation uh, uh, ideas and, and the fintechs which can augment our uh, uh, disruptive business models. So we went through the whole cycle, like in three months, we, we scanned, uh, we demoed uh, and, and we shortlisted few POCs uh, from our fintech and insurance ecosystem. Uh, this is one example, but you can imagine the type of problems that we get is across the spectrum. There are sometimes a very point solution, point uh, specific ask from our clients. Okay, for this, can you help with some fintech solution? Or it could be quite a broad based. For example, one of the client mentioned that okay, in the in the BNPL space, we want to embark into a B two B area. So can you help with uh, which are the fintechs who are already into this, and can we partner with them? So across the spectrum, we are partnering with the fintechs, and uh, uh, I think today also that's the that's the intent. So if you uh, if you are already into this ecosystem and you would like to uh, partner with us, I mean we are very happy to engage. So we can we can have initial conversation and and go through the process and see I mean uh, what are the engagement models we can pursue together. So with this, I would like to uh, thank uh, the Flanders Investment and Trade uh, Body for this opportunity, and I will pass it on to my uh, to next speaker, Murali. So Murali, over to you. Uh, thanks, Shantanu. Yeah. So let me quickly share. Yeah. So let me quickly get started by uh, giving an overview of uh, ABN Bev. We are the world's largest uh, brewer based in Leuven, Belgium, right? And uh, we have over 500 plus iconic brands, including the most uh, 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 most popular and loud uh, global brands like Budweiser, Stella, and Corona, right? And we have operations in over 50 countries, uh, and we have over 200 breweries, right? And we as a as, as AB and BEV, we dream big to create future with more cheers for our end consumers, for our customers, for our suppliers, our farmers, and also uh, uh, our uh, people, the employees, right? And we see a, a, a strong role of technology and analytics in this, and that's where we have been investing heavily on these areas as well, though we are a beer company, right? Uh, moving on. I think a lot of you had this question on how is a beer company into fintech, right? So the, the reason for this is that if you look at globally, right, small and medium businesses, right, represent 90% of the businesses and also uh, generate more than 50% of the employment, right? And uh, uh, last year, we had close to 333 million small and medium businesses. And uh, and and if you look at irrespective of which geography it is, right, this is one segment which is underbanked or underserved by the financial uh, uh, traditional financial solutions. And uh, as per IFC, uh, there is a whooping 5.2 trillion gap in terms of uh, uh, the meeting the financial needs 
every year for this segment, right? And uh, when we zoom in further to, let's say, Avian Dev, uh, we ourselves have six million small and medium business customers. These are the mom and pop shops, the family run uh, 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 outlets, uh, pubs, restaurants which sell our uh, products. And uh, if you look at this 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 particular segment, right? Uh, they were the worst impacted during the pandemic, right? And as I said, the challenges have been either they're underbanked or uh, or unbanked. Uh, they have a lot of challenges to get access to the credit, uh, uh, be it working capital or even for growing their their business. And also, they also have a challenge of access to the technology to transform their business, right? And with this in mind, uh, ABN Bev uh, 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 created a group company called ZTech, right? And the whole mission of this particular company is to uh, empower small and medium businesses to change the world through technology. And one of the primary focus of this particular company is on FinTech. And the whole idea is that we create a FinTech ecosystem to enable financial inclusion of the small and medium business customers, right? And for that, we have uh, looking at three focus areas, one being credit, uh, second being payments and POS, and the last one being digital wallets, right? And this is where we have started, but the whole idea is that we grow this entire uh, uh, service offerings to include every other area, right? And to do that, what we have taken an approach is a, a combination of uh, some homegrown products and uh, uh, leveraging uh, the partnership with the fintech startups, right? And uh, and to help get a, a, a great experience for the uh, SMB customers, we are working on building platforms and integration layers through which these SMBs can avail some of these services, right? And we already have like uh, 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 companies uh, created around this, like Beast Bank is one, and say hi, these are the companies which are servicing our uh, small and medium business customers in LATAM region, right? And in addition to uh, looking at SMBs, right, one of the other thing we have also looked at is that uh, we have kind of created a, a, a B2B and uh, commerce uh, platform where we also enabled solutions like marketplace where the SMBs can not just order the, the products from ABN Bev, but also order uh, other different things they need to run their business effectively, right? So that's another add-on work which ZTech as an entity is adding. And also, it is also has a vision to create like a finance infrastructure for different D2C platforms we have across the globe, right? And apart from the core focus on FinTech, ZTech as an entity also looks at solving other key challenges of small and medium businesses. Just to give an example, right? One of the things we realized as a challenge for our customers was access to, to electricity, right? And that's where we looked at partnering with the startup, which helped them get uh, low cost, sustainable uh, uh, um, uh, electricity source, and hence help them run their business effectively, right? And as a, as a focus areas, as I said, uh, it, the, the ZTech as entity is today uh, working in uh, uh, South America, uh, in, 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 in Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, and Dominican Republic. And it has already started looking at emerging markets like Europe and Africa, where we are doing some small pilots to see if, if the same solutions can be extended and work with the local partners to uh, address these uh, business requirements of small and medium businesses in this region, right? Moving on, uh, to help not just ZTech and also the uh, larger ABN Bev, uh, uh, ABN Bev business requirements, we have uh, a, a, a team which is a focused on tech innovation, which is called Beer Garage. I'm part of this team 
uh, based out of India, Bangalore. And the whole objective of this particular team is to accelerate value delivery by identifying and proving our uh, uh, innovative technology capabilities by working with the ecosystem partners, right? And as I said, we are a distributed team. Uh, we have four hubs uh, across the globe, uh, one in US, one in Brazil, one in Israel, and fourth one in India, right? And each of these teams have different functional focus. Uh, just to give an example, right? Our Israel hub focuses on supply, logistics, procurement, sustainability, right? These areas. And we in India hub focus on fintech, global operations, metaverse, and NFT. Uh, we also have accelerator and APAC, in, APAC incubator. These are the programs. I'll probably dwell deeper into these programs where uh, and talk about how we engage with startups to work on different areas of uh, our business, right? Uh, we started India Hub in, in late 2019. And if you look at our journey so far, uh, we have worked on 35 plus innovation projects uh, and delivered multi-billion dollar business impact. Uh, and here what we've done is we have adopted multiple models uh, uh, where uh, we had uh, uh, approach of uh, plug and play solutions from startups getting embedded into the uh, ABN web ecosystem. We also looked at co-innovating with the startup to come up with solutions which not only solve uh, ABN web's problem, but also could uh, uh, be used to solve larger industry problems as well, right? And also we looked at some product development uh, uh, again along with the, uh, uh, with the startup partners, right? And uh, uh, we also forged strong uh, ecosystem connects. So today we have uh, partnerships, uh, 30 plus partnerships uh, globally. Uh, this includes uh, 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 big techs like Microsoft and Amazon to uh, uh, accelerators or incubators uh, uh, like Plug and Play China, right? Or uh, it could be VC firms like SOSV, right? And, and even academia like Geo Institute, uh, uh, ISB, right? So we've been working on creating this entire ecosystem and we've been connecting with startups across the globe. And we also got awards and recognitions for our effort. Um, these are some of the things we have uh, won, won uh, in, in 2021. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah, so what do we as a Beer Garage India Hub focus? And what are those opportunities for startups to engage with us, right? So as, as we talked about, one of the big focus is fintech innovations. So we as a team support ZTech, uh, 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 ZTech as an entity in terms of bringing the best fintech innovations from across the globe, right? And as part of this endeavor, for example, uh, uh, we help the, the ZTech entity with the market research to help them understand what are the opportunities uh, in Africa, what's the viability of uh, starting a fintech opportunity business in Africa and things like that, uh, help them connect with the ecosystem, identify the right partners, right? Similarly, we are uh, uh, running a lot of uh, projects, especially in credit lending, for example, in Europe, uh, uh, just after pandemic, right? A lot of the pubs and restaurants which had to be shut down uh, because of pandemic wanted to open up. They wanted to re uh, renovate their their uh, setup. They wanted to uh, grow themselves, uh, 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 look at opening more outlets and things like that. And the challenge for them was access to credit. So uh, we ran some pilots in 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 uh, in Germany, in Netherlands, in France. Uh, partnering with uh, uh, fintechs uh, like uh, uh, ro rolling funds, funding options, and get got them access to long-term growth credit. Basically, this is the credit which probably could be for three to five years and uh, help these outlets grow uh, their business, right? We also are uh, looked at working with different uh, um, uh, again, fintechs in Africa, like market, merchant capital, where we ran pilots to see 
uh, if they could uh, uh, provide them with short term credit. These could be things like working capital loans uh, to help them uh, uh, meet their financial needs, right? And we also looked at when we look at uh, SMBs, right? One of the key, I would say, entry barrier for them to adopt digital uh, uh, payments was the cost of the POS machines, right? And also the uh, MDR rates, which they have to pay uh, uh, and things like that, right? So we looked at innovations in this area. For example, what are the POS innovations? So there were things like uh, a mobile POS, which probably has a very low cost. For example, a POS machine for a merchant could cost anywhere between like uh, in especially in South South America, right? In Latin region, anywhere between hundred dollars to two hundred dollars as a one time uh, investment. While there were also some rental models, but it was still considered an entry barrier. So what we looked at is introducing a small uh, 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 device which looks like a credit card but works along with uh, uh, mobile phones and uh, with with the cost of around uh, twenty thirty dollars. And with that, we could bring in a lot of these SMBs to start adopting uh, digital payments, right? And we are also looking at ways to also increase the revenue of these uh, 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 small and medium businesses. We are looking at value added services. We are looking at uh, um, getting them other uh, different solutions. For example, working, uh, we are exploring uh, whether there are insurance companies which could offer them uh, both uh, personal insurance for the shop owners and their families, as well as uh, uh, insurance for their business, uh, things like that, right? And uh, uh, all of these are focused on the SMB segment as such. Uh, apart from that, uh, we also work very closely with our B2B and D2C commerce teams, uh, help them with, again, uh, solutions around payment gateways uh, uh, for different regions they they have operations also introducing the uh, new uh, uh, i would say fintech based consumer loyalty uh, solutions like cashback for example we worked uh, in in europe uh, uh, with this uh, uh, startup called uh, novelnet and then introduced cash cashback uh, solution to the b2b commerce uh, platform we have there Right, and uh, that's talking about fintech innovations. Now coming to uh, uh, sales and marketing innovations. Uh, here we focus on uh, largely the emerging markets, but what, because what we realized is emerging markets like uh, APAC and Africa have very unique requirements, right? And that's where we are uh, uh, supporting this uh, team with different. Uh, uh, solutions again partnering with the startups uh, from across the globe. Uh, one of the key focus area now uh, is metaverse, where we are exploring consumer metaverse, where we are looking at how do we engage consumers uh, uh, better, uh, how do we create immersive experience for the consumers. For example, in Korea, we are looking at uh, uh, for for. The brands which have a positioning around relaxation can be created in relaxation metaverse, right? Similarly, we are looking at uh, uh, for 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 some of our brands, we are looking at can we create some play to earn games and then uh, uh, reward our 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 consumers through these platforms, right? Uh, we are also exploring industrial metaverse where we are looking at uh, uh, things like digital solution, uh, digital twins in our breweries, right? Uh, look at use cases like remote maintenance via the uh, um, metaverse and things like that, right? And uh, apart from that, for enterprise metaverse, we are looking at uh, uh, areas like employee onboarding, right? Uh, we are also looking at virtual events because uh, while some part of the world uh, we have uh, uh, things opened up, we have our offices opened, but uh, uh, for example, in China, there are still some lockdowns going on and things like that. And we wanted to find platforms where we could engage our employees better, right? And we are right now working on identifying partners to do quick pilots, validate them, and then uh, if they're successful, scale them, uh, not just uh, in, in one region, but uh, across the globe. Right. 
the other one is NFTs, I would say, uh, and uh, ABN Bear is is not new to this. Uh, in fact, much before uh, 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 Facebook uh, announced uh, about the rebranding of Meta, we had uh, 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 been a pioneer in this area. We did a, a, a quick uh, round of NFT with our Stella brands uh, 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 by partnering with Zedrun, right? Uh, we also have a lot of NFT uh, uh, drops being done around our Budweiser brand. Uh, in fact, you guys need to watch out for the uh, next round of NFTs around FIFA because we are Budweiser is is the sponsor uh, for FIFA uh, World Cup, which is upcoming. Right. And what we are looking at here is again, uh, um, there are some unique use cases, for example, in China, NFTs in, in the traditional uh, or the or the typical form is is. Yeah, so let me quickly wrap up in a in, in couple of minutes. So uh, I don't know where uh, I lost you guys, but just to summarize, right? Um, we also have a global operation center in, in India where we have a, a team which services uh, uh, all our key markets across the globe uh, in people operations as well as finance operations. Right, and uh, we help them again through partnership with startups on bringing in innovations and improving these processes uh, for ABN Dev. Right, and uh, just to quickly talk about three key programs we have where we engage with startups. One, the first one is Beer Garage Accelerator. So this is a a, a structured program where we uh, uh, engage startups to test their solutions. Uh, to either meet our immediate business needs or help us prepare, prepare for the future. Basically look at what are those upcoming technologies have, which could probably have a significant impact on our business and work with them on this, right? Uh, and uh, and it, it, it is a equity free program where startups can work with us uh, apart from getting an opportunity to execute a, a paid pilot with us, they also get host of benefits from our uh, tech partners uh, like Microsoft for startups, um, Freshworks and, and others, right? The second program is a program where we have uh, ideas coming from our business or employees and we convert that into MVPs. And if these MVPs are successful, we would like to scale them as full fledged products, right? And we from India drive uh, this program for our APAC zone. And uh, uh, here again, uh, startups partner with us in, in helping us convert these ideas into MVP, right? So that's the other program. And lastly, we have a, 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 a ecosystem engagement platform called Innovation Shorts, where we have created multiple uh, uh, channels of engagement, uh, like we have a, a channel of LinkedIn, Instagram, a website. Maybe I, at the end of uh, uh, the Q and I will post it in the in, in the chat box. Uh, uh, we, we also have a podcast where we, we where we host uh, different innovation leaders across the globe, different startup founders, and the whole idea is to create this community and then nurture the innovation community. Yeah. So yeah, with this, maybe I'll end, end now and maybe, yeah. Okay. And I think right at the end of the presentation, we seem to have lost them again. <laughs> um, anyway, um, let's get back to the Q&A. Um, ah, there is. Thank you very much, Murali, for uh, for your yeah. presentation uh, and thanks of course to all the speakers for uh, for their very interesting uh, uh, presentations this morning slash afternoon. Um, let's get back to uh, Alan's uh, question about the uh, issue about software as a service, um, which is not, um, which is uh, per, um, according to him a no go for, for financial institutions. Um, I don't know, Bjorn, Shantanu, Morali, what, what your uh, ideas are about this and, and how to overcome this, um, specifically, of course, in an India context then. Um, well, I'm, I'm not a, an expert in that. I would say it depends a little bit. Huh? Just like here, you have uh, Indian banks who um, 
who are a bit more innovative on that front and who are a bit more forward looking. You have players like DBS Bank coming from Singapore who are active also in India, um, you know, who uh, who have made their move to the cloud, who are very much API driven, who, you know, would welcome that kind of uh, partnership or innovation. Um, and I hear that there are other traditional uh, Indian banks who are still running behind a little bit and probably look at it from a more of a conservative angle. I think it's not different, any different than uh, than the local market that we know in, uh, in Belgium or Europe, where you have uh, some players who are uh, opening up to that idea and, and who are making, you know, transitioning to the cloud for their own, uh, for their own services. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't. I don't think that there's a uniform answer to say. Uh, you know, that that's a little bit my view. Uh, but maybe um, the two other speakers have a better view on that. <clears throat> yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I also reflect on on that uh, answer, uh, Professor. So uh, depending on the use case, basically, um, uh, the banks are taking steps. I think which is more data driven and where the banks wants the data to stay in their own, uh, uh, whether it's their own private cloud or whether it's their own data center. I think if that is that is the angle, if it, if your use case is highly data driven, maybe you are uh, potentially seeing such a situation. But in general, you have also referred that, yes, it's changing, uh, definitely. So I think the more uh, what we see is that uh, the banks are open for experimenting uh, with, uh, with the APIs that the fintechs are providing. And that's the whole reason we have this Cubo as a platform where we host fintech solutions and the solutions are on the cloud and we provide APIs to the banks so that they can experiment uh, with them. So depending on the use case, we can you know, take this offline as well and, and see I mean, how we can help. Yeah, I, I cannot uh, answer from uh, a, a financial institution point of view, but as a large enterprise, right? One of the things which we are also concerned is data security and, and then compliance and things like that. So when we look at any fintech, we would want to see how uh, how they address these challenges, right? In terms of data security, being compliance to the, uh, the, the, uh, the legal requirements in that particular operating country. So we look at all that and then partner with them. Right. And uh, from Indian context, just to add, right, I think one of the good thing you, you probably also have heard is there is this thought uh, on already. I think there are some work around this handbags uh, environment by RBI, right, where when you bring in new solution, you probably validate them and then only you kind of go for a larger adoption. Right. Maybe that kind of initiatives in India is, is going to help you if you are looking at India as a market. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, there's another question in the chat in the meantime, um, also related to uh, beer and then digital technology. So uh, somehow there's a parallel with uh, with Beer Garage. Uh, we're a small Belgian based beer academy. Um, I'm very interested to uh, learn a bit more about what that entails exactly. Um, COVID has steered us in the direction of data driven uh, e-learning platform. Can Beer Garage help us to scale up and accelerate? Um, so I think that's a question for uh, Murali to uh, to tackle. I think this this is from Carl, right? So yeah, definitely let's connect on this uh, because we uh, have initiatives and we already look at uh, Beer Academy, right? We also have uh, a academy which help uh, the employees understand the entire brewing process. Maybe what we would uh, we can do is maybe connect uh, offline and understand more about this and uh, see if there are synergies to work together. Excellent. Um, of course, in, in the webinar, we had um, introductions to two, um, I think, very interesting and, and very practical platforms, I would say, for um, all kinds of fintechs or, or even digital tech uh, uh, companies in general um, to become active in uh, India or through India, even globally. Um, Maybe for Shantanu and, and Murali uh, to make it very concrete and practical, um, the fintech companies that are in the webinar uh, today, what would be the next step if they would be interested to uh, to cooperate with um, with with either of you, um, you know, in any way? Um, what would be the next step? Sure. Uh, so from a TCS standpoint, uh, we are uh, very serious about creating this open innovation ecosystem, which we called as Coin. 
and uh, we are really looking forward to partner with uh, some of the cutting uh, cutting edge fintechs and the technologies that uh, you all are working on. So as a next step, uh, if you think that uh, we can add value to help you expand, not just in India, but globally, uh, that's that's our basically overall positioning. Uh, so please feel free to reach out uh, on case by case basis. Uh, as a next step, we would like to have a first level of discussion to understand your fintech solution. And if it uh, fits and complements our ecosystem, we are definitely I mean, looking forward to partner with you. Yeah, so uh, even, even from ABN Bev point of view, but you, you would have probably noticed that within FinTech, we have a focus around largely small and medium businesses and uh, the e-commerce area, right? That B2B and uh, D2C e-commerce area. And if you have interesting solutions, which probably solve the, the some of the problems I talked about, or you have solutions which probably uh, are going to uh, be uh, shaping the future, in this space, right? Uh, you could reach out to us. Uh, I, I'll put the channels through which you could reach out to us. Uh, send send us a, a quick brief and 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 a pitch deck with with the solution uh, details about the solution, right? And the problem you are solving. And uh, yeah, if, if when if things are aligned, we'll definitely engage with you, discuss with you. And also, as I said, there are programs which which we launch, so you could apply to those programs uh, when we talk about the problem statements we are trying to address in this program. So typically, Beer Garage Accelerator timeline is around uh, April. That's when we kick off uh, the, the applications for the accelerator. So if you, again, find something interesting, then uh, you could also apply, right? So so I'll quickly, after this, uh, Q and I'm going to drop the channels where you could reach out to us. Great, thank you. Um, the floor is open, uh, so so if there are um, questions from from the audience, uh, do feel free to uh, to ask them now. Um, I think we will probably be wrapping up um, in a couple of minutes, um, so now is your chance. Um, if not, I I still have a question actually for. Um, uh, Bjorn for Professor Krums. Um, you talked about adoption markets, um, the, the, the funding, the talent, um, all the regulatory aspects, which all seem to be uh, very positive and, and favorable in, in, in India. So there it's, it's a maturing market, uh, the market is there, the adoption rate is very high, funding is definitely there, uh, the talent is definitely there. Uh, with India Stack, um, the whole regulation is also in place um, or becoming in place at least um what do you see as uh, major obstacles um so the flip side of of of, uh, of all the positive things um what what would be major obstacles for um flemish uh, fintech companies that want to become active in the uh, in the uh, fintech ecosystem um yeah of course i i think that they're um they're not that different from um, the obstacles that some fintechs will uh, will face here. Uh, is that um, um, I, I see quite some some innovation power on fintech side, but um, you also see quite some um, some banks who are still um, you know a bit hesitant and and uh, where it goes uh, uh, a bit slow and and where the ramp up for a fintech to partner uh, with or to find your solution might be. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, could 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 actually be uh, take some time huh? uh, and could be frustrating experience. Huh? Um, uh, next to that, um, I I think that there is well, that that's that's of course what I experienced is that that you have to get to know your way around. Uh, also, that's a bit the same in every country, but uh, there's some different regulation, there's some different uh, bureaucracy uh, uh, involved. Um, um, so, but I'm sure that uh, there's ways around that and that you can find uh, uh, solutions to that one. Um, but uh, but yeah, next to that, I think there's it's not that different than uh, than some of the hurdles and the, and the, uh, and the obstacles that we see that fintechs are facing here, which are a bit the same. Finding the right uh, entry point, finding the right contact person, is not always that uh, that easy and straightforward. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, we, on that front, it's it's probably a bit the same struggle for any startup. Yeah. Um, can I add something to that? Yes. Um, I think 
what happens for a fintech is it's easier if you're backed with uh, with marquee names like TCS or ABN Web. So if a fintech from Belgium is validated by a company like TCS or ABN Web, it's also for easier for a bank to be that much more easier to adopt that technology. I think uh, we can look at collaborating more in such manner then. It's probably also a question of differentiating yourself. Uh, you could say, wow, there's a lot going on. Mm. Uh, that's, that can be a downside if you want to differentiate yourself in that, that uh, very busy landscape at this moment uh, uh, to show or to highlight how your solution uh, might make the difference. Huh? Yeah. True. All right, I think we've also passed the time. We're 15 minutes over time. Yeah, we've gone 15 minutes over time, um, but I think it was worth it. Um, so, um, closing words, closing remarks. Um, uh, first of all, of course, big thank you to uh, our three speakers. I think we got a great overview, a helicopter overview from uh, Professor Combs about the uh, uh, the landscape, the fintech landscape in India, uh, what is currently the state of play. Um, and again, we will be uh, adopting this and um, um, and much more information, of course, in the uh, updated market report, which will be available uh, in a couple of weeks time. Um, so many thanks to um, to all the speakers. Um, again, two great and very concrete and practical um, opportunities, I think, for, for some of our fintechs. Um, so let's see uh, in the future, in the near future, if there's um, if there's any collaborations that can grow out of um, out of this. Um, as I mentioned in the in the beginning, uh, FIT will be active at the Singapore FinTech Festival early November. So if there are any Flemish FinTech companies that have joined us today that are uh, planning to travel there or participate in any way, um, do reach out to us. Uh, we would love to know about you uh, so we can uh, prepare to connect you locally with, uh, with Indian visitors um, who will also travel there. Um, and of course, more generally uh, speaking, FIT in Mumbai and again also our colleagues who are based in New Delhi and in Bangalore are always ready to uh, to support you with uh, with any questions um, uh, that you might have for uh, for the India market. Um, at the end of the day, that's what we're there for. And as the professor said, um, it's a matter of finding uh, the right angle, finding the right way into the market. Um, it's about getting uh, uh, the right information on regulation, for example. And uh, I think that is exactly where where we can play an added value or we can play a role to uh, to support you there. Um, so I guess that's it. Um, thank you once more to all the speakers. Um, thank you also to uh, my colleagues, Sherlyn and uh, Christophe and Bart, of course, in, in, in Belgium uh, for um, helping organize everything and setting up everything technically. Um, and uh, last but not least, of course, thank you to everyone who joined uh, today for this uh, uh, interesting webinar. And um, we do look forward to meet you again sometime in the future, um, either in Singapore at the, at the FinTech Festival for another webinar, or of course, if you have specific questions, do reach out to us. Thank you very much.